In recent months, AI seems to have dominated the world. Everyone's heard of ChatGPT, everyone's heard of DALI, everyone knows what these things are, and the vast majority of people have used them in one sense or another. However, not as many people know that there are actually APIs available for these things, and that you can actually use them in a multitude of languages, not just Python, I'm gonna be showing Python off today, but you can also use them in you know, JavaScript and stuff like that, which is really cool. Uh, so today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to use chat GPT in Python. So it's worth pointing out at this point that this API isn't completely free. It is very, very cheap, but it's not completely free. Uh, you do get a free trial. So you do get $5 worth of credits that expire after a good few months. So you have a good while um, to kind of try it out. But after you run out of credits or after the credits expire, you do need to start paying for requests. The, the price for these requests is a fifth of a cent, uh, or maybe it's a fifth of a penny. I can't remember which uh, currency it used on the website, but it's a fifth of whatever it is um, per 1,000 tokens. And according to the, uh, there's a little description at the top, it says that you can think of 1,000 tokens as about 750 words. So for every 750 words, you'd be paying a fifth of a penny, which I actually think is quite a good price. It's really not very expensive at all. Um, and to actually use the free trial, you don't even need to connect a credit card. So if that's a problem for you, then you can play around with this for a little bit um, and not be left out of the fun, which is actually really nice. Uh, the good part about it as well is that, the, is that the API is really, really easy to use. Um, in a sense, like almost a little too easy. <laughs> it's like deceptively easy in a weird way. Um, but hey, that can only be a good thing. So before we actually use it, we need to install it. So you can do pip install uh, open uh, AI, and I already have it installed, but I am using version, where is it? Version 0.27.6. Make sure you do keep this updated quite regularly because obviously the new updates will be able to use the new models and all that stuff, but I'm using 0.27.6 uh, for reference sakes. So if, if this video is a little bit outdated, then you know why. Uh, but for now we can do import open AI. And then for convenience sake, I'm also gonna do from uh, open AI import chat completion. This just makes the code a little bit cleaner. In my eyes, you don't have to do this if you really don't want to. Um, and we need to set an API key First, so you can get an API key from the portal, uh, but the way I've done it is I have a file here called key.txt. You would probably ideally want to do it in an environment variable if you wanted to, um, but I'm not going to bother doing that in this video. So if you're doing it like I'm doing it, you can just do with open key.txt as f and an open uh, AI dot API key equals f dot read um, and then dot strip. I did notice just then there was an API key path. Maybe it has a built-in file reader. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, feel free to experiment with that in your own time. If anyone does experiment with that, let me know. I've literally only just seen that. Um, so that's why we need to import the main OpenAI module because we actually apply the API key directly to the module. We don't actually create a client or anything to do it. Um, and then to actually send a message up to ChatGPT, all you need to do is have response, which is our response data, chat completion dot create. So it's a class method. And we set our model, which in this case, we're going to be setting to, to GPT 3.5 uh, turbo. I'm not sure if it's using 0301 or 0302. I know 0302 is in development. I can't find any information to say whether it's out or not. So if anyone knows that and do let me know. Uh, we're not using GPT-4 because you still need OpenAI Plus to be able to access that. Um, but GPT-3.5 Turbo is perfectly fine. And then you provide a series of messages. Now these messages are a list of, of dicts. So each message is a dict. And these dicts have two key value pairs. The first of which being the role, which can either be user, which is from you, assistant, which is from uh, ChatGPT, or well, there's a third one called system that isn't really used or no one really knows how to use that at the moment. Uh, but that is available if you want it. And you also provide the content, which is you know the content 
to send or the message to send to ChatGPT. So in this case, we're going to do how far is Earth away from the sun? Or I guess the sun. You can do it like that. Uh, and then from there, we can just print the response. Uh, so we're just sending our first message up. And if we do, if we just clear that. If we do pi demo dot pi, we can see that we get a response back. So if I just expand this terminal up, we can see we get a list of choices. You can actually specify um, to get more than one response out of the AI if you want to. I'm not going to be bothering with that because there's not much of a point. But if you did want to get um, uh, more than one message out of the AI at once, your choices would be a list of multiple things. And you can see you have your message here, which is the content. Um, the Earth is approximately 93 million miles away. Or, and um, the role is assistant. You also get a created timestamp. You get an ID, which is the ID of your message. You get the model. Oh, it is 0301. Okay, that, that answers my question then. Um, and you also have your usage. Um, so your prompt tokens are the number of tokens in the message that you sent to it. The completion tokens is the number of tokens that it sent back. The total tokens is just the two added. You get billed for that many tokens. Um, so all the tokens that you send to the AI and all the tokens that you get back, you are charged for. Um, so do keep that in mind. I believe a single response can only have up to 4,096 tokens. Though I'm not sure if that's 4,096 total tokens or completion tokens. Um, for what I can tell, it's still quite a lot either way. I did some testing and I actually couldn't make it hit the limit with what I was testing it with. Um, but yeah, so these tokens are what you get charged for. Uh, as I say, you get a thousand tokens per fifth of a penny. So this you know, response costs literally nothing at all, uh, which is good. Now I did say at the start of the video that it is easy to use and it is easy to use, but it is a little bit cumbersome having to specify the, mod the model every time and then having to spe um, you know, specify the messages as a list with all this stuff. And the reason you do have to specify as a list I will mention is because ChatGPT doesn't remember anything it sends back through the API. You're in control of storing the messages. So you can alter the message history if you want. You can even um, implant messages sent by the assistant. Um, so you can actually force the assistant to say certain things, uh, which is how you know people want to make applications um, using pre-prompts generally do it. But I'm going to be spending uh, the rest of this video showing you how to make a slightly nicer version of this in a function. So we're going to create a new file, we're going to save it, and we're going to call it chatbot.py. And we're just going to copy all of this stuff again, because you don't need to copy it back out. Um, and then we need to provide uh, or set a history. Uh, and this is going to be our message history. Um, so all the messages that we send to the AI are going to go in there. We also need to do a send method or a chat method, depending on what you want to call it. And then we pass in uh, content, which is going to be a string. And we can do history.append. Uh, and then you have your role, which in our case is going to be user. And then you have the content, which is the content that we're passing into the function. And then we get the response data back out. So we can do chat completion dot create uh, model once again is GPT uh, 3.5 turbo. And then the messages is our message history. Uh, so we send the entire message history in. We then get the output, which is resp dot or more access. Uh, Apparently you can do dots for this. So I'm not actually sure it re responds with a dict, more kind of some object wrapper. I'm, but either way, I'm just accessing like this. Uh, so we're just getting the output content specifically, appending that as well uh, to the message history. So we can do role, I need to do a dot there, not a comma. So where the role is the assistant, and then the content is the output. And then we're going to return the output from the function. Uh, so this function essentially kind of handles all of our dictionary creation for us. It handles our message history management for us. Um, and it allows us to just send a message in 
and then get a message out without having to deal with anything else. Obviously, if you wanted to track your token usage, then you could you know, program this function to do anything you want, but I'm not gonna be showing you how to do that in this. Uh, so simply beyond that, you can do while true, uh, user input equals input and then just have it like that. And we can have our response uh, equals send user input. I guess we can do assistant. Um, maybe like some assistant output would be a better variable name to use. And then we can print our assistant output to the terminal and you'll see why I'm doing this when we actually launch it, but we're gonna end uh, with two new line characters rather than just one. So if I run that, we don't need this to be this big anymore. If we run that, we get an input prompt. And then we can say, you know, how far from the earth, or how far is the earth uh, from the sun? I can wait for a response. The average distance between the earth and the sun knows is approximately 93 million miles. And then we can, you know, continue saying on, you know, what about Saturn? And because we're passing in, uh, you know, this message here, and we're also passing in this message as well, so it's actually understanding the context and it can respond back. The average distance between Saturn and the sun is about 886 million miles. If we didn't pass through all the messages, it wouldn't have an idea. It wouldn't have any idea what we were talking about. Uh, so again, you can go on, you know, continue going on, what about Pluto? Uh, Pluto is you know, 3.7 billion miles. And you can see why I did that um, uh, double new line for the end now. It just gives us, you know, a nice little, uh, gap between the prompts and the responses and you can keep going like that you could set uh, message limits if you wanted to so for example if you only wanted to send the last five message you can create a deck uh, I do have a video on those uh, in the cards and you can set the max length to 10 now, it's important you do it to 10 because you, you kind of want to keep five pairs um, of messages because every because every message you send obviously the assistant sends on back and then that goes in the history as well um, so it'd be the number of pairs that you want to keep times two if you wanted to do something like that. Um, but that would be homework for you. Uh, one other thing I am going to show you, though, is that you can do this asynchronously if you wanted to. So if we send this to async def send and then we can do await chat completion dot a create. So this now does everything it normally does. It just does it asynchronously instead. So this is you know perfect for something like a Discord bot, for example, where obviously everything is done asynchronously. So if you wanted a, a chat bot in that, you can just use ChatGPT to get the messages back. Obviously, there'd be extra considerations as well, considering it's a group chat. But again, that is an exercise for the viewer. Uh, so for now, I actually need to import asyncio as well to be able to run this. Asyncio, and then I do love how I sort didn't trigger then. You gotta love it. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't trigger. Uh, Asyncio.run, and then just our main function. And if you run it again, it will do exactly the same thing. So what is the average height of humans? Oh, we also need to do await send as well. <laughs> it's weird, I did that exact same thing when I was planning this. Uh, what is the average height of humans? You can see it's making the request uh, asynchronously, it's sending everything back asynchronously. It's doing all the same things it did before. Um, so now the, the longest operation, which is, you know, actually getting a response back from the model is all handled asynchronously, so it's no longer blocking. And then, you know, uh, it's gonna do like, what about the UK, for example, and it will do exactly the same thing as it did before, just asynchronously now. So that is a, you know, really easy introduction into how to create a chatbot uh, using uh, ChatGPT, or more accurately, I suppose, you know, how to, uh, you know, get responses back from GPT. Obviously, if you wanted to create a chatbot, you can use something like Kivi. I think Gradle, is it called Gradle? I'm not sure. 
uh, is quite good for that, uh, I've heard. But if you like the video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions about what you've seen here, or you want to see me do a particular video in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below. I read them all, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so either by becoming a member, or by becoming a patron. One pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people, and I will see you in the next video, where we do something really cool. See you for that.